is the apricot wine. Um, it's been sitting since October and it is now April. So it's been sitting for quite a few months. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, crystal clear, ready to be bottled. So uh, I am sanitizing up some equipment here. We got the wine pump and those kinds of things. I gotta get my filter. We'll go ahead and filter it. And I'm gonna set up my bottling station and washing station over here. So uh, I'll be back when I get all that set up. Okay, so we're gonna rack it because there's a little bit of lees on the bottom. I don't know if you can really see it, but we want to get it off the bottom of that. So we're gonna rack it. So I've got my all-in-one wine pump all set up. Uh, as you can see, there's a siphon tube coming out of the wine uh, and it goes into this housing where there's a filter. So it's gonna polish our wine. This should take any sediment that happens to get through out. And then uh, it comes back down through the line here, goes over and down into another carboy. So uh, we just flip this switch on and once it builds up pressure, it'll start siphoning here. And there it goes. It's filling up the housing. Once that's full, then it'll run down through here and over into our carboy. And filling up our carboy there. That's just star sand on the top. Uh, nothing to worry about there. So we'll just let it rack down. Okay, so we've uh, transferred that into another carboy. Uh, it's not full because our other one was only a three gallon. This is like a six and a half gallon. We're gonna transfer that down into a, a bucket anyway so we can uh, back sweeten it. Okay, and then if you come over here, I've got my bottling station all set up. As you can see, I've got my bottles here. I've uh, got this attachment on my sink. I'll show you how it works. We've got our sprayer. In case we need to spray down the bottles at all on the outsides. Okay, and then uh, over here I've got my bottling tree. And on top of my bottling tree I've got this washer. It's got some sanitizer in it and I'll show you how that works. So first of all we uh, grab a bottle and we throw it on here. As you can see my water is on but there's nothing running. Um, it doesn't run until you push down on this lever here. So let me show you how that works. And you push down on the lever and then it uh, sprays with like a high pressure spray in your bottle. See, see how that works? It works pretty slick. So then you drain your bottle. And then if you needed to spray off the outside for anything, I've pretty much cleaned the outside of them already. But uh, then you come up here on top of this and you push your bottle down and it shoots sanitizer up in there. And you just let that sanitizer drain back into there. And you put your bottle on your bottling rack. And you just continue this process. I kind of like to rotate my bottle around, make sure I get every area of the bottle. And you just continue this process until you've got enough bottles for what you're gonna what you're gonna bottle. Um, I found I like to do about 35 bottles for five gallons of wine. You end up with between 25 and 60, but I always like to have a couple extras just in case uh, your volume's off a little bit. So we're doing four gallons here, so I'll probably do like 25 bottles and. Uh, I'll just continue this until I've got them done and then uh, we'll show you what to do from there. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and rack this down into a bucket just so we can mix in some back sweetening. We're going to use grape juice, white grape juice for this one. Um, that changes the flavor. Uh, it's a little flavor grape juice or apple juice. Um, you could use uh, simple syrup or anything like that, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and use this grape juice. So we'll just let that rack down into the bucket and then uh, we'll be back. Okay, so we've got it down into our bottling bucket. So now we'll take a spoon and we'll get it all sanitized up here. And 
drop it down in there. And then we're going to add one can of this juice. It's just 100% uh, white grape juice. This is probably going to be plenty for as sweet as I like it. Just dump that down in there. And we'll give it a stir. Then uh, we will come over here and get our little stuff to take a sample of it. Sanitize my turkey baster here. take a little sample out and we'll give it a try and see if it's sweet enough um, some people may like it more sweet may like it less sweet I kind of like mine in the in the middle there um, not too dry not too sweet I like it a little bit more on the drier side myself yeah that's uh, still pretty dry I'm going to go ahead and add another can because it's pretty dry still. This one fermented down to 0.998, so it's uh, pretty dry in the beginning. So let's add the second one down in there. You always want to taste it first after the first one. You don't want to just dump two in there. Because um, you can always add more sweet, but you can't take it away. So you want to be careful when you're sweet on things. A lot of people like it a lot sweeter than I do too, so you can add three cans or whatever. Uh, you got to make sure that this is stabilized, remember, before uh, before you add any more sugar to it or it will re-ferment and uh, blow up your bottles. So uh, I, I stabilized this back in January before we bulk aged it, so uh, we're good there. So yeah, we'll just uh, take us another sample off. Bottling day is good. Uh, you can just bottle all day and take samples all day, and by the end of the day, you're feeling pretty good. Oh yeah, that's much smoother. Uh, like that a lot better. We'll uh, leave it right there, and uh, that'll be good. We'll go ahead and uh, start bottling. Okay, so we got that all mixed up now. Now uh, we've got our bucket of sanitizer down here. We've got a new attachment. This is our bottling attachment for our wine pump. So uh, the tube that went down into our carboy when we racked this, it's kind of tangled up in here. We're going to take this one off, the red connection, see? Um, so I'll pull this one off. And then I want to sanitize this one. So I'll dump it down in here in the sanitizer for a minute. Um, sanitize this all up. This is the one that's going to go into our wine here. So we'll drop that down in there. So it's going to come out of there. We're going to run it through the filter one more time. Might as well, we've got it hooked up, so we'll just go ahead and run it back through the filter. Uh, then it'll come down through this hose, and we'll connect it to our hose here. And then we've got this button that we can use to turn the pressure on and off when the bottle gets full. We push this button down and it stops filling, so we can move to the next bottle. Um, so I'll go ahead and get this hooked up. Get some bottles set up. <clears throat> I'm going to put a towel on the floor and uh, line my bottles up down here on the floor. And then we'll just rack from up here down to the floor. I can, with this pump, also rack from, put the bucket on the floor and rack up here. But uh, where I'm corking and everything, I'll just do it from the floor. Okay, so I've got just an old raggedy towel down here because uh, it's just down there in case we spill. But... Uh, 
anyway, I got my bottles all set up down here. Um, my bucket is all set up. I got my racking cane in there. Here's a tip for you. I like to put something underneath uh, just to kind of tilt the bucket back to where my bottling wand is so we can get as much liquid out of the container as we can as we're bottling. So uh, we'll start bottling. So I'm going to flip on my pump. I know it's kind of loud guys, sorry about that, but it uh, makes life a lot easier on me. Um, so we've got this little button here like I showed you. Got this button and it'll stop the pressure. Um, we'll go ahead and stick this down in the bottle. It'll create suction. As you can tell, it's coming through. It's going to run through this filter and then down into our bottle here. And if we push this button, see, it stops it. So and then when it gets to the top of the bottle, we'll just hit this button. Okay, so I learned a little trick here. Um, apparently your bottling bucket can't be higher than your bottles. Um, it wasn't shutting off like it was supposed to. So uh, let me get a thing or two set back up and uh, I'll show you how it works. Okay, so I think I got it figured out now. We'll uh, put the down in the bottle and uh, it's transferring through my filter over here and going down into my wine. I'll bring a close up up to you here in just a second. Um, but this is kind of how I bottle here. This is only the second time I've used it to bottle, so. This is as close as I can get, so I'll let it release. And it'll start filling up the bottle as you can see. And then when it gets to the top, you just push this button right here and it stops. So kind of hard to film where I'm at, so I'm trying to do the best I can, guys. Sorry about that. But then it, when it gets to the top and you push this button, it puts it down to the perfect level. Um, you pull this out and I'll show you. So you push that button down and there's a straw down in there and it sucks anything extra out and it ends up over in the bottle on the table that you can see there. Any of the extra stuff will go into that, the overflow. So that bottle is uh, ready to be corked. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and fill up the rest of these and then we'll come back for the corking process. See you then. Okay, so we've got our corks. We ended up with 18 bottles. I had a little mishap and I tipped them over and they kind of spilled a little bit. But So I only ended up with 18 bottles this time. I would have got, I think, 24, but I uh, had a little mishap. Anyway, it happens. Kind of disappointed right now, but uh, anyway. So I've got, this is kind of a controversy. Some people say to soak these. Some people say don't. Um, I put them in here just because, you know, I, the way I look at it is, I don't go to all this work for a year and let this sit for a year to have something on my cork when I put it in and then make it spoil. So um, I, I just set them in some sanitizer before I do it. So uh, anyway, I've got my bottle corker ready. Um, let me show you my process here. Uh, let me grab a box. Actually, I'm not gonna put them in the box yet. So. Let me get my. So you just take your bottle and you uh, put it down here. This is a spring loaded. You put it on there and it goes up in there. Then you just take your cork and you drop it down in there. And you just push this down. And then there you have it. Uh, this is adjustable so you can s decide how far you want to sink that so it's nice and level. Um, and then you just set that bottle to the side. And you do your next one, and this is adjustable, so it'll be any bottle. Um, with this, you can do synthetic corks or anything. I've got number nine corks here, so. And then you just continue to do that. 
on the rest of your bottles. The uh, number nine corks are a little bit harder to get in, but uh, works really well. So I'll go ahead and get those bottled up and then I'll show you the rest of the process. So I know there's a lot of controversy on whether you can do screw or screw top bottles or not. Um, it's not really recommended, but uh, let's see how it works out. We'll just do one right here and see how it works out. And these are again number nine corks, so number eight corks would be even easier, but it does work. Um, they are a little bit thinner at the top, so you kind of want to be careful, but uh, it does work, so there you have it. Okay, so I'll show you the next process after we've got the cork in. I take a nice, hot, clean wash rag and I like to wipe the bottle down. So I'll wipe the bottle down, then I've got a towel here to dry it off a little bit. And then I stick it in the box. And I do that on all of these. And I just continue to do this until I've got them all boxed up. And then uh, once they're in the box, they got to sit for at least three days upright, just like this. They want them standing up. That way the cork has a chance to dry out before we do anything else. So uh, this is going to probably end this part of the series. Um, the next part will be labeling. We'll uh, come back next week and we will put the shrink caps on. Uh, I'll print out the labels. I'll show you how I do that. And then we'll label the bottles. So uh, these are going to sit for a week and let the corks dry. And then we'll bottle them up. So we'll see you next week. Cheers. And remember, there's always time for a glass of wine.